Hi everybody, it's Latana. In this video, I want to do a quick little video on uh, printing tips and under bases and how to prepare your artwork for printing, basically. So, I've got this design and it's actually already color separated. When I um, do my art, I do all of my art in Pantone colors so that uh, my computer will actually go ahead and color separate it for me. So this is just a spot color design, nothing hard. Um, how many times have you done a design like this that has an outline on it or a contour and then you get to, pre to print and you wish, wow, I wish I had a solid background on that. So that's what this video is about. Um, let's say, for example, that this area that's black, we wanted that to be to print with white and we would want to do a solid white underbase and then print this purple on top of it in case it's going on a black shirt or something like that. So I'm just going to show you some things really quick. Like I said, it's already color separated and I'm going to go to file, go to print, show you how this would normally print out. This is an issue that I've uh, had a lot of people hit me up about and ask me about. So here it is. So this would be our white, but we need this white to be solid. So what most people do is they'll go in and they'll do put it on a separate page and print, uh, make the purple solid print, you know, at two separate times. That's pretty crazy. Uh, it takes a lot of time to do. So I'm all about efficiency. So let's see here. Now in in Corel, you should have something called a device independent uh, postscript file. So I'm going to click that and let's see how that prints out. Now you notice it does the same exact thing there. Okay, but watch this. Close that up. Now on the on the top color, which is the purple, and we see it's purple here. I'm going to right click this purple. And I'm going to click Overprint Fill, and I'm going to click Overprint the Outline. Now, if you notice, my color changed, and the reason that changed is because I have this checked right here under View where it says Enhance, and it says Simulate Overprints. Simulate Overprints means to show me what it's going to look like once it prints like that. So it's showing me that. I can uncheck that and then it won't show me that. Okay. But that's just a little handy tool to let you know, hmm, something's going on in my artwork. Okay. So now that we have, again, let's right click. We want these on. And this has an outline. So that's why I have an outline on. You can simulate, you can overprint your fill or you can overprint an outline. So I've got that on. Now I'm going to go back up here to print. And we're in Corel. I'm going to show you. Look, you still got the same thing, even with simulate over, even with overprint the fill on. You still got the same thing. Go to post in, independent postscript. And it changed. Okay. Now it's solid. And that's what you want. Now, what you want to do. So let's cancel out of here. I've got this how I want it. I might as well go ahead and go here and go to page. And I'm going to do select everything. And I'll just go on and group that center that to the center of my page and then I'm going to use my macro and this macro is available at Hey Latano on Facebook or at latano.com once I do that now my macro is there and this is just a uh, registration macro okay so none of this stuff I'm going to zoom in all this stuff in the background is not going to print. The only thing that's going to print is going to be that. So you're not going to see any of that when you actually go in and print this file out. I can take this and I can go order and order to 
of it. Corner that to the front of the page. Okay, now we are good to go. I'm going to go to page. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to print. Got that overprint fill on. Let's go in and we're going to go to print, 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 print. There's a couple of different ways that you can do your artwork. Um, I've got separations on. And I'm going to take this black line off. Okay. And these are my three print files here. Now, what am I print set up in? Ah, look. I'm not in my independent post print file. Bam. Let's change that. Okay. So now this is my right under base. So what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to print it and what happens is this saves the file when you save this file you've got two options you've got an option to save it as a print file or a postscript device if you're doing half tones you want to save it as a postscript device and then you can rip those half tones uh, you can open it up and print it in half tones okay out of ghost script or whatever program that you have uh, that's if you don't have accurate or anything like that. Now we're going to save this as a PRN file. And then I'm going to just label this test. And save it to the desktop. Okay. When you do that, it closes. And your original file is still here. What you got to do is go wherever you save that file, that test file, open it up. What a print file does is a print file will open up in all black on the different pages. So what we have here now is our print file. And our design is ready to go. And we can go ahead and we can print that. Okay. Very, very easy way to do your steps in Corel. Let's go back to our original design. Now, if I was sending this design over to a customer, I can also do what's called a um, output file. So, if I wanted to save this as an output file, I could go here and click this button that looks like a little CMYK registration mark, collect for output, and this will gather all of the files that are needed to print this file. It'll include a PDF and you can choose what you want it to be for. And I'm going to put this for pre-press. It includes the CDR as, um, and you can put whatever version you want. So you can back this down to like 16, 17, 15. But what it'll do is it'll create a file that'll have your, um, color palette if you have any fonts it'll save the font in there you see here include the document fonts and font list so it'll save this font in there so all of that stuff is saved and it'll include the color profiles and everything and then you can place this in a zip folder when you go to that folder or whoever you send it to or if you you know you're saving it this is the perfect way for you to save your files because what happens when you save your files like this if I came back to that file 10 years from now and I didn't and I was on a new computer I didn't have that font that font is in there whatever color profiles is in there and I've got a PDF to view that is also uh, a um, vector file, and I can use that to view it and open it up against a new Corel Draw file or open it up in Illustrator. That's how I send my files over to people who I send uh, who, who work in Illustrator and things like that. So that is a great way. I just showed you an easy way to um, color separate your files in Corel Draw. Um, there are other ways that you can do it, but that's a really easy way for you to do it. Anyways, thanks for watching.